Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Coleman, your host this week, um, this episode of Talking Tax. And I'm joined by my co-host, Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Um, and he's the man here, really, um, the tax expert. I'm with the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, managing editor and comms director for the Grassroot People. Uh, and we're going to talk today about the school impact fees and, their, and whether we should keep them. There, there's some bills in the legislature, the 2024 legislature, that are proposing to repeal the the school impact fee for various reasons. And uh, Tom just wrote a column about that, or he's, he's got a column coming out about that, uh, in which he um, brings up a few really good points that I hope you'll read once it comes out. But one of them is that uh, not only is the whole thing questionable constitutionally for various reasons, but even when they do collect the money, um, they they seem to hoard it. Um, or maybe that was a previous column, Tom. But why don't you take it from there, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll run with it. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks, Mark. We're, we're talking this week about the school impact fees. Um, if if you don't know what they are, uh, let me kind of give you some history. Our, our Department of Education is unique in several respects. Um, most states handle K-12 education at the local level, uh, like it could be a town, it could be a city, it could be a county, it could be a, uh, a school district in, in many states. Uh, but we're different because we're descended from royalty. King Kamehameha III, and we, and we did have a king back, you know, back in the old days, uh, established the, the precursor to the Department of Education in 1840 to run education statewide throughout the kingdom, as it then was. Now, uh, with uh, Hawaii being a state of the United States, a, a lot of the uh, government that uh, kind of grew up under the under the um, monarchy. Uh, kind of stayed with us. And with that, the uh, Department of Education that was supposed to provide for uh, the education of uh, children statewide. Uh, along with that, and unlike most other states, uh, the, the DOE doesn't rely on the property tax uh, to fund education. Uh, our now our constitution in in the state of Hawaii now says that the property tax exclusively goes to the counties, so uh, the schools are left with funding uh, from the other taxes our government imposes, primarily the uh, general excise tax, which which brings in you know half of our general fund revenue uh, or close to it, and uh, it's been that way. Uh, since the 1930s, at least, which is when when the when the GET came into being, mm -hmm. but then that wasn't enough. Um, the the um, DOE uh, was given the power uh, in uh, was it 2007 uh, to impose a tax. Now, this is unique because no agency, even the Department of Taxation, has the power to impose a tax. The, the Department of Taxation only executes uh, the, the tax laws that are uh, enacted by the legislature. And this point is actually what the title of your column was, or will be, uh, Guess Which Agency Can Impose a State Tax? And uh, that was a really interesting concept that the DOE can do this. So the way it works uh, is that developers of housing projects um, are required to provide land for school facilities depending on the number of kids that the projects are expected to house uh, and the amount of capacity or lack thereof uh, in the schools that now serve those, uh, those areas that are being developed. Uh, builders in the same districts that are too small to be expected to provide land have to kick in some cash instead. And in right, addition... So it's, 
it's so it's cash or land, depending on the situation. Right. And uh, in addition to that, all home builders or buyers must pay a construction cost fee. Right. So, 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 so these you know, sources of income go to the go to the DOE. Well, can I back up for a second there, Tom? I, I in looking at the 2015 state or 2019 state audit of the school impact fees and reading about the background, apparently this kind of started after the State Land Use Commission divvied up all the properties in the state back in the 60s, in other words, uh, to rural agriculture, conservation, and urban. And um, somehow the, 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 the DOE, I'm not sure how, what, how that related to the LUC, but the Land Use Commission, but somehow they had this, what they called um, uh, sharing, fair sharing, uh, uh, fair share contributions. Yes. Yeah, the fair share contributions, and that's what I'm uh, unclear about how that started. That none none of it really sounds like it was a law. It just sounded like the DOE started sort of informally negotiating with uh, developers to, you know, pony up some land or some cash to help uh, build the future schools of their neighborhoods or whatever. And it was only formalized, and that was formalized in the eighties. And then finally in the, in the 2007, like you said, they, they passed that law that t turned it into school impact fees. So I was in, so how is it, do you think that the DOE was able to do this informally before that act came along that formalized it? Well, they must've had some kind of statutory authorization. I mean, I can't imagine that they wouldn't have anything. Yeah, uh, otherwise, was... otherwise, why would developers even talk to them? Right. Yeah, uh, so, I, so, I know so it's they, not clear. I'm, I'm unclear about that, but the reality is now we do have a law uh, where the DOE is able to, you know, impose on these guys for money, and um, and it hasn't all quite worked out as well as we might have hoped for various reasons. But anyway, yeah, so let's get let's uh, get into some of those. Yeah, um, you you had, you mentioned, uh, and um, and I think we need to go into next. Uh, there was a an audit uh, done of the school impact fee program by the state auditor, who is actually supposed to do such things. Um, he did one in in, in 2019, and uh, the uh, the audit report found uh, that the school impact fees uh, have been of questionable impact. He, he found that. Uh, of the uh, fair share contributions, yeah, a million here, million there was spent to uh, to uh, upgrade facilities, provide a couple more buildings in like elementary schools in the in the various areas. But once the school impact fee uh, was formalized, uh, zero money was spent. Zero, big fat zero there, um, and. Uh, and we're going what? It's so like why are they collecting the money if they're not spending it, right? That's they're right. supporting it. They're just wasting capital that could be out there and you know in in the community. And and at that time, uh, the amount of impact fees collected this is this is 2019 now uh, was 5.3 million dollars. Let's let's take a look at this graph to show what's been happening over the past few years. Okay, what the graph shows uh, is it's it's up to 2024, fiscal year 2024, uh, and the balance of the school impact fees uh, has swelled to $18 million from that 5.3. But what is even more interesting is that, you know, if you had money being spent out of one of one or more of these school impact fee accounts, you would expect that the amount to go down, right? Oh. But the amounts keep going up and up and up. It's either flat or inclined up to the right, right? There, so is, there is are no dips. That, this is all money that's sitting in a in an account at the DOE. It's all sitting in account of the DOE. Now, right now, there are four school impact fee districts, okay? 
there's uh, the, the newest one is Kalihita Al Moana, which is um, along the path of Skyline Rail. Yes, uh-huh. which is which is on the bottom. The, those are the bottom two bands. Then oh. there's Leeward, which is the other one on a walk with. That's the uh, uh, gray and the yellow. Uh, Central Maui is the blue and the green, which is the next one up. And the top two are West Maui. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, small in, in comparison, uh, but still adds to the, the bigger pot. And the bigger pot is $18 million, and, and it doesn't seem to have been used. Mm. So that, that's why um, we have, you know, an, an issue, and, and you've, and you, you hit it on the hair there. You hit it on the head there, Mark. You said, "Well, if they're collecting all this money, why the hell aren't they using it? What's it there for?" Yeah. Well, I guess it's there to raise the cost of developing houses, which gets passed on to the consumer, and it's another reason home prices in Hawaii are so high. That's really one of the major complaints right now, isn't it? Oh yeah. Very much, very much so. Um, uh, if you want to build a housing development, you got to go through all this, all this uh, red tape, permitting, um, you know, through various and sundry agencies. Uh, then, then, then you build the thing, uh, and and there are you know uh, non-government delays and expenses, uh, especially recently with the supply chain delays that we've had. And in, and in the meantime, um, the Department of Education can't spend all the money that they're given. We, we've we've had recently an episode uh, in the news uh, where the DOE had to come to the uh, the legislature and said, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna lapse um, half a million dollars, half a billion dollars worth of projects." Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because they can't get to them. Uh, uh, it's unreal. Yeah. So, so of course the you know the legislators, uh, you know who worked you know really hard and fought tooth and nail to get those projects on the books, you know they, they were beside themselves, right? They worked they worked this hard and this and everything is lapsed. I I I, um, I, I kind of thought you know I, you know I kind of half jokingly at the time said. You know, maybe, maybe they hate me, and and and, and they hate me because um, both my elementary school, uh, my intermediate school, and my high school uh, were all, all on the laps list. Oh. all of them, every 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 school, out of the three that I went to, they're all on the laps list. Well, it seems like this discussion about the school impact fees. Uh, you know, you can't. But help talk about the DOE at the same time, usually, and 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 so on one hand we can talk about how there might be you know a constitutional issue regarding the nexus between the the fee and whether it really is appropriate you know for the for the for the person who's supposed to pay it um, and all of those kinds of things and the hoarding of the money and and the adding to the housing prices. But um, really, you know, it's also about the DOE uh, and how it's got a, two billion dollars, you know, and uh, every year is their budget. And of course, you, as you said, this is like uh, maybe five percent. Was that what you said? Five percent of their budget is from school impact fees. And, oh, I probably probably much less than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, 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 does it really even matter to them with so many millions of dollars, billions? The, the, do they really need, even need this anymore? Especially now, too, when enrollment is declining. It's been declining steadily for, I got the chart around here somewhere, but definitely in the last 10 years, it's been going down. I think the peak was in 19, late 80s or not, somewhere in the 90s. Well, let me let me tell you an interesting, an interesting fact that, that came out in the auditor's report. You know, you know how important the school impact fees are? Are to the DOE, you know how many people they assign to it? One, one, oh. just wow. one. Oh. Now, um, so apparently they don't care about this that much. And yet they're and yet they're making a big deal about, for example, that affordable housing development in downtown Honolulu. They 
they wanted to. I think they, I think under the emergency order, uh, they wanted to. That's that was the first decision of the uh, the working group that got set up under the governor's emergency housing order. They exempted this uh, adaptive reuse project downtown, which is about fifty units, turning a an old office building into condos. Um, they exempted it from the school impact fee, which saved the developers and hence the ultimate buyers at least uh, two hundred thousand plus dollars. Um, which you know that that makes affordable homes a little less affordable when you have to fork over money. There was also a story about somebody in um, very recently, 2022. Um, there's a I think it's Howard Hughes in Kaka'ako. They're actually most of the developers incorporate the school impact fee that they have to pay into the price of the home. But Howard Hughes was packing it on like here, here's what you're paying for this. Here's the price of the home, and here's what your school impact fee is. Which was about three thousand something dollars, which per, per per unit, and so people were going, "What? What is this all about?" Um, and I wonder too, with with like I said, with 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 school enrollment going down and fewer, you know, the birth rate declining, and people leaving the state, um, is the school impact fee even make any? Dip, does it make a difference anymore? And and even too, it also applies to people who don't even have kids, and may never have kids. So there's a little bit of an uh, unfairness there, I think. Uh, you know, thoughts on that? Well, um, it seems like there's a, you know, people have a mentality to power grab for the DO, the DOE. I mean, even uh, we've been we've been following a, a constitutional amendment bill. Uh, that that was proposed in 2018 first, and it's, it's come back to haunt us again. Yeah. But 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 the, but, the, so, but somebody, some genius has proposed, you know, as an additional funding source for the DOE, uh, to take back some of the property tax authorities from the counties uh, to uh, to levy a surcharge, whatever that means on residential investment property that's worth $3 million or more. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't even say real property. They say residential investment property. Uh, what, 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 does, what does that mean? I mean, could it be, um, you know, if, if, if you had like $3 million in Hilton stock, would that count? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I hadn't thought about that nuance. Of or, if, or if you had some mobile homes. Yeah. Would that count? Uh-huh. Residential. You want, you, want to, you want to surcharge those? Um, you know, one, one thing uh, that you always got to worry about when you're enacting, uh, you know, broad language to give the state taxing power is uh, when, when, you, when you let the genie out, you don't know what the genie is going to do. Yeah, it's a foot in the door. And the more, the more wiggle room, you know, you leave in that lamp, uh, the more trouble might come out of the of that bottle. Oh man, that whole thing that you know the last one in 2018 went down because of the uh, constitution of uh, the lawsuit that uh, uh, claimed the language was vague. But if if the if the new bill really says residential investments, I think most people are thinking about you know rich people from the mainland buying an expensive house so that they won't live in half the year or whatever. Um, but really, well, that, that, that's that's what they think people are thinking about. That's what they about. think, right? But what, yeah. what? But that language is so vague and malleable, you know. Yeah, it it doesn't say tax, uh -huh. although that's what it is. It says surcharge. Uh huh. It says residential investment property, whatever the heck that means. Yeah. Wow. Um, and and there's and there's some issues there, and 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 like you said, the the the, the county's got you know, super uh, bent out of shape because uh, one of the things that, that counties do is they go on the bond market and they borrow money, okay? And their primary revenue source for repayment of those bonds is the property tax. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the bondholders are uncomfortable at the prospect of having the property tax monkeyed with. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and they and they've told the, the the counties that in no uncertain terms. So 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 the counties are opposing uh, the constitutional amendment, you know, even today. And if if the thing passes, you know they're gonna you know they're gonna file suit again to get it off the ballot. And 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 I think you know um, with the current state of the uh, of the measure. Uh, it's not that different from the one that the Supreme Court shot down in 2018. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't thought about that as far as the language issue goes. I, I, you know, at the Grassroot Institute, we're just opposed to it simply because it's a tax hike and, and all the problems that that can cause in the real estate market in ter- because this is a, applies to a conveyance tax. Was it the conveyance tax? Uh, or is that a different one? That's a different one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a Reagan moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think there's another lot that, yeah, it's like they're, they're grabbing everywhere, right? So uh, I'm trying to make sure here, but. Uh, yeah, they, those, yeah, those are, those are different. DOE, bills. Like it doesn't have enough money already. You know, that, that's what really blows me away. Yeah. Um, and then they said this is like. Um, Totally necessary for teachers and so forth, and and you know I I sympathize with them a little bit. You know, sure. they 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 aren't getting, uh, you know, paid very much when you compare uh, the cost of living here with that on the mainland. Uh, but that's a problem you solve by appropriation, mm-hmm. by 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 allocating uh, the funds in our you know the the, the money's in our general fund mm-hmm. uh, through the legislative process, and that's. That's what we elect our lawmakers to do. They're supposed to, you know, go into the square building and, and oversee the expenditure of funds off of our general fund. And they make, you know, over a billion dollars in appropriations to DOE every year. Um, well, well, Tom, let me ask you, I, I, in principle, um, is your objection to the school impact fee that they're not spending it? or that it's raising the cost of housing for people? Or is it just um, that you just don't like it at all? Well, uh, I think my major concern about it is that they're not using it. And if they're not using it, why are they taking it from us? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, what, what have you heard from them about that? What, what do they ever say? Have you, has anybody ever asked them, how come you're just sitting on this money? Um, I don't think anybody's given him an answer. Uh, they, they didn't give Les Kondo an answer mm-hmm. when, when he wrote the report in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't see any, uh, or, or I haven't yet seen any testimony about, you know, what the DO uses the school impact fee for these days. Would the DOE be officially um, endorsing this? I mean, would they be submitting testimony supporting this? Well, uh, if you're talking about the, the the bill to repeal the school impact fee, I, I, I would imagine they would be submitting testimony opposing it. Right, right, right. Well, I think what I actually what I was talking about, that's a good point. Of course, they would oppose that. But the one about where they want to tack on the surcharge, they would probably. Yeah, they're supporting it. They're supporting it. They're supporting it. HST is supporting it. Um, you know, they don't they, they don't care. They just want more money. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, that you know, the uh, is going back to the school impact fee. Um, the DOE would be opposed to that too. I wonder if they've submitted any testimony. I'm sorry, I don't know at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I uh, I think one of those bills is coming up for hearing soon, but hasn't happened yet. But so, so we so we so we may find out, but. Uh, certainly from the looks of the graph, it doesn't look like they've been spending anything. Would it make you happier then if they started spending that money or would, or do you? Do yeah. You... I mean, they're, they're supposed to be spending that money for the good of the people. Is this, is this a pretty much, amount? is this like a special fund? This is like a special fund. Yeah, isn't? It's just, it's, I believe it is a special fund. And there's, like you said, there's hundreds of these special funds just sitting there. Thousands. Thousands. I know you said that. Really, it's really thousands, huh? 
And I think it's you maybe said that on a prior two, show, and I went thousands. It's it's more than two thousand. I, I know they counted it at one point. My God, that's that's ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, and it, it just is. so you know, and and at a time when people are constantly asking for more money at the legislature, wanting to raise our taxes, they're not even spending the money we're giving them, or that they're taking, I should say, and uh, it. it, it and and going back to the school impact fee, it, it doesn't seem to be um, a practical enterprise anyway. You know, it doesn't seem to really be a good idea to me, considering all the demographics and the extra cost on houses. Well, I I think they ought to you know focus more on maintaining the assets that they have. You know, yes. spending the money that we give them, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to letting it rot and letting it lapse. Right. That's, that's my two cents worth for today. <laughs> well, I look forward to future articles by you about the uh, school impact fees. And uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a cool topic. Maybe we won't have to be writing about this after this legislative session, uh, depending on what the legislature does with the bill to repeal, which we did at the Grassroot Institute uh, submit testimony uh, favoring the bill to repeal the school impact fee. Um, so, Tom, thank you very much. It's been a really fun show talking to you about uh, something that, you know, you know, probably most people don't really know about until they see that bill, maybe when they're buying their new home. Um, and, then you'll know uh, what it is. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was funny that you should, you know, that you pointed out that the, the new district tracks the, the train, the Honolulu Rail, as if that's going to be the new boom town for kids. And new school demand, probably, huh? But anyway, probably. thank you very much, everybody. Tom, we'll see you next time. And viewers out there in Aloha land, um, thank you very much for being here with us today. We hope you'll be back next week. If you liked this program, uh, be sure to check like on your YouTube channel there and uh, subscribe to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Mark Coleman, uh, and this is Tom Yamachika, my host, our host. Uh, wishing you a great day and a great week. Aloha.